Hello everyone and welcome to the Emax Conf. I am Jonathan and in this talk I'm going to demonstrate ways of producing sheet music in Emax using Lillipond and maybe also convince you to use Emax for writing your scores. So I'll start with an overview of the syntax for those who are new to using text-based notation as a shallow dive into the deep pond of lilies and lily ponds and move on to showcase some of its functionalities using org mode and lily pond mode. One disclaimer, however, I am not a lily pond developer. So what is lily pond? Lily pond is a file format and music engraving system for producing high quality sheet music. It translates textual representations of music to graphical objects. So it's similar to LaTeX in that its input format describes the visual layouts of the score using commands to define musical expressions. Commands begin with a backslash. For example, the Fermata command as shown on the left yields its graphical equivalents on the right, the Fermata symbol over the note B, and so on and so forth. It's also fully extensible like Emacs, allowing users to extend and override LilyPond's functionalities using the Scheme scripting language. It can be used for early and contemporary music, tablature, vocal music, lead sheets and so on. And above all, it works with Emacs. In fact, LilyPond ships with Emacs Lisp libraries including a major mode for editing LilyPond files. So, the input files are similar to source files. They contain expressions formed with curly braces, comments that start with a percent sign, and the code is indented. Notes are entered using lowercase letters and rests with the letter R. In this case, the lowercase R or R4 is the equivalent of a crotchet or quarter note rest. Durations are entered using numbers and dots after the note name. And if you do not specify one, the previous duration is used. You can also tie notes together using the tilde symbol. In fact, you can input chords, lyrics, embellishments and a lot more. So I encourage you to read the manual for more information. Now let's switch to a terminal window. So with LilyPond installed, let's create a test file with the extension ly and open it in Emacs. At the top of the file is the version statement, which tells LilyPond which version to use when compiling the file. Here I'm using version 2.20.0. I've added the clef and time signature, so let's add some notes. Okay, I'm going to close this now and compile the file by running lilypond followed by the file name. Okay, so now let's uh, view the output. Okay, so here's a more complex example for randomizing note sequences. The idea is to create new reading materials each time the code blocks are evaluated. So as usual, we begin with a header. I've added the title and composer. Then we add the note sequences to use in the composition. In this case, SN is a note name, just like A, B, C, D, and so on, and stands for snare drum, the percussion instrument. Now here's a function that's going to shuffle the notes in the table. And finally, we expand the notes inside the LilyPond source block. So whatever the function returns is expanded inside the drums block. Now let's press Ctrl C, Ctrl C to view the results. Okay. And if I run this again, it should create a new composition. Great. You can also addition the piece using the MIDI command, which creates a MIDI file of the score. Note also that the OB library, sorry, the OB LilyPond library comes with two modes. The one I'm using now is called Arrange Mode and is useful for assembling complete scores. The Basic Mode, on the other hand, allows you to mix text and music by embedding LilyPond snippets and export them using typical org mode commands. 
Now to demonstrate the basic mode in action, I'm going to export this document to a PDF file. In this case, the, the file header argument is required, so you have to provide one and include the file name. Again, you can run the code and view the results. Here it is. So now let's uh, export this to a PDF file. And here it is what it generates. Now I'm going to show you the workflow I used to produce music books in Emacs, combining Lillipond and LaTeX for a perfect marriage. I begin by sketching the first draft of the manuscript using pencil and paper. Then I move to Emacs to input the notes in a Git repository. This is a typical source file. It begins with a style sheet where I set variables and layout settings, although in general there's no need for tweaking the layout unless you have specific requirements to do so. The easiest way to compile the file from Emacs is by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl L, so let's do this now. And the compilation buffer will tell you if there were any errors in the file. Now to automate the process of compiling several files and building the PDF, I use GNU make, so all I have to do is open the shell and run the make command. And don't worry, I'll provide a link to the source code on the last slide. As I moved forward with the project, I found at least two things missing. One, I had no access to a metronome, at least not from the editor. So I built one for casual use and made it available in the Melpo repository. I also missed bar numbers in the source file. This is useful when going back and forth between input and output files without getting lost. So I wrote a command for toggling bar numbers, which I hope you can see on the left. Also, some expressions are difficult or slow to write on the keyboard. Accents and tuplets, for example. So I use template expansion extensively for this purpose mainly as snippets. So what do I think? Well, I think Lillipond can be a sharp paradigm shift for people used to GUI alternatives, but the results are impressive, and you don't have to dive too deeply to start using Lillipond. Likewise, the ability to extend the software I think is especially appealing for music professionals, enthusiasts, composers, and the academic community. For example, allowing users to create alternative notation systems required in non-Western music traditions and other non-conventional requirements. Also, Lillipond and Emacs both have extensive and well-written manuals and active communities of users. But if you're still not sure where to start and want to wet your feet in the deep but warm pond of lilies, Lillipond and Lillipond users, I invite you to contribute to my Lillipond projects, which you can do so from the links on the screen. So thank you all, I look forward to your comments and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.